All right, now to the Kate Steinle verdict. Let me refresh your memory. The illegal immigrant who did shoot her, the jury said, no, it wasn't murder, wasn't manslaughter, it was an accident. That jury verdict maybe could help make the case for building a border wall. And bringing in Congressman Iowa, uh, Iowa Congressman Stephen King, who's big on the wall, you're a big proponent of it. Can you tell me if the, if the Steinle verdict has led to concrete steps to build that wall? Well, Stuart, I think it helps make the case. I mean, America is appalled at the jury decision in San Francisco that everybody in America recognizes there's not one dissenter that Zarate killed Kate Steinle. And they couldn't find him guilty of first degree murder, second degree murder, or manslaughter, or negligent homicide. And they found him only guilty of a gun charge where he said he found a gun in a shirt underneath the park bench and picked it up and it went off spontaneously. Um, I own a number of guns. I never had one do that. Yeah. And I can't believe that this is the case either. So the jury seems to be anti-gun, but they're pro-apparently illegal aliens. And we need more than a wall, but a wall would have helped. At least uh, it, would have, it would have funneled that traffic so we had a lot better chance to intercept him coming back in. Mm -hmm. We need more. We need well, Kate Steinle's law, too, so that he would have been locked up for 5, 10, 20, or 25 more years, depending on the charges. Can you tell me if there's any definitive move to end this sanctuary city nonsense? Hmm. Uh, because, I mean, San Francisco is a sanctuary city. Arguably, this wouldn't have happened if there'd not been a sanctuary city. I mean, does the Steinle verdict give us concrete steps towards ending sanctuary cities. You know, Stuart, I wish I could say yes to that and that it creates the momentum in this Congress as we put together the CR, this omnibus that's facing us for December 8th. But I don't see the will and the leadership in the House and the Senate to make any definitive move that's going to lock down the enforcement here in this country or to build a wall. There seems to be a reluctance there throughout the entire leadership team. I don't hear any one of them saying we've got to protect the American people. Instead, they're saying we have an opportunity to do something about amnesty with the DACA people. And I think they've got that completely wrong. I think that the American people are the victims of this. MS-13 has been loaded up with hundreds of DACA, of DACA recipients, and, uh, and the country has been the victim of this. We need to restore the rule of law, the respect for the rule of law. How can the law, why, why can't the law itself, the respect for it, be sacrosanct? Uh, Ronald Reagan took the bait in 1986. He recanted. Uh, Ed Meese III, Attorney General, wonderful, stellar man, also gave the advice to Ronald Reagan, and, and they said they learned that they should not have done that. But today's crop of uh, leadership and members of Congress seem to not want to go back and re -listen, re -re review and learn from the lessons of 1986. I lived them. I kicked a dent in my filing cabinet that day when I found out Reagan had signed the Amnesty Act because I knew the, the rule of law in America was damaged, perhaps beyond repair, and now it's, it's penetrated into the psyche of even the conservatives in this Congress. Extraordinary. I'd like to have been there when you kicked the file cabinet. At that stage. <laughs> it was a cheap filing cabinet. I wish I would have saved the door of that. I'd have framed it today and taken it to the floor of the house and given a little lecture for an hour or so. Back in those days, not everybody had a video camera, which they could just take a picture of. Steve King, everyone, thanks for joining us, sir. Much obliged to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Stuart.